By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create an application that shows banner ads, interstitial ads, and even rewarded video ads within Thunkable apps. Nice job getting a look. Let's get started. Hello, you're all very welcome to another Thunkable tip. My name is Donal and in this tutorial or this tutorial series, we're going to take a look at the ad mob component. So we're going to be learning all about how you can monetize or earn revenue from your uh, applications. To do this, we're going to have to add in some uh, ad mob components themselves. So in the experimental folder at the bottom of our screen, we've got two options here. So although there's two options in the uh, designer itself, we actually can put in three different types of ads. So this video then is going to demonstrate the three different types of ads and it's going to show you how to test them all out. Let's start with the simplest of those to begin with. We're going to add in just a banner ad at the top of our app. Okay. Um, so in terms of properties then, we have visible, whether or not it can be seen. We have test mode. That's important if you're using your own IDs because if you click on your own ads, your app will be suspended. So it's against the terms and conditions to click on your own ads to earn money for yourself. Um, and what we can do here is you can enable test mode to make sure that you don't inadvertently or accidentally click on your ads. And the other thing then we're going to do is we're going to add in a couple of buttons then to load our different, uh, load our different ad units. So the first button that we'll put in here, button one is going to be to show the banner. The idea with this app then is that it'll just be for testing out and I'm going to put the AIA in the description below so that you can test this out as well and make sure that all of your components are uh, working correctly. Next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to put in a label for a little bit of spacing. I'm going to leave the text there as label one and I'm going to set the height to be fill parent, just like this. The reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm putting the button down at the bottom screen, again, is that the ad mob guidelines say that you shouldn't put buttons right next to your ad units like this. In terms of our blocks, if we open up our blocks editor, we've got um, one thing to do really, so that when the button is clicked, for example, we can load our uh, banner like so. Another way of getting the uh, ad mobbed banner to load is to use uh, the screen one initialized event. So this would be that when your app loads up, what would happen is the ad mob banner will display. What we're gonna do just because we're testing is we're gonna have the button click event load this um, banner. What we're going to do now is test this out here in our live testing application. So we've got our label one and you can notice then that there's a little bit of space here where the ad is going to appear, but because we haven't clicked the button yet, we can't see anything. So let's click the button there, show banner, and we don't get uh, any ads appearing on our app. In order to do that then, we're going to have to fill in the last property, which is the ad unit ID. While we're testing, it's a good idea to put in a test ad or a sample ad unit. This means then that you won't accidentally click on your um, on your own ads. You won't end up getting your uh, ad mob account um, suspended. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the sample ad unit ID here for the banner application. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back into my designer. So back in my designer then, uh, what I can do is find my ad mob banner unit and I'm going to have to click Control V or Command V for Mac to paste that in. Now when we open up our blocks editor, now that we've got our ad units added in, if we click the uh, show banner button, we get one of these. This is actually a nice uh, smart banner. So it's got multiple different ads and it's got three little mini ads here and we can scroll through them like this back and forth like so. Uh, so that's, that's the banner ad, uh, not too much to it. And like I say, usually you'd add them or have them load after a few seconds in the uh, in the app. One other thing that we could do maybe just to test this out is that we could set the visible property to false and just to get, give you an idea of how your, your page would change. Uh, in the blocks then, when we click on the button, not only will we, will we load the ad, but we're also going to set the visible property here to be true. So let's take a look at how this um, behaves then in our app. So you can see label one is at the top of the screen because the ad mob uh, unit itself is set to false. When we click on show banner, it 
um, loads the ad and it also displays the banner at the top of the screen. So that's another way then just to add in the, the banners into your application. Great, now that we're happy enough with um, displaying banners, let's put another button in here into our application and we're gonna use this one to show the interstitial. So show interstitial, like that I think. And down in our experimental section again, we're gonna add in our interstitial. So drag and drop. This one then won't appear on the screen. This is a non-visible component. So we've come across a few of those before. And the same thing applies here. So we've got to specify an add unit ID and whether or not we are in test mode. So over on the AdBob website then, what we can do is we can find the interstitial sample add unit ID. We can control C or uh, command C if you're on the Mac to copy that. And we can command V or control C to paste it in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do then is in our blocks editor, we're going to use the show interstitial button to quite simply load the interstitial ad. This means then that when the um, button is pressed, the interstitial ad will pop up on the screen. Over here now in our live testing, when we click the show interstitial button at the bottom of the screen, we get an interstitial ad that pops up like this. What you can do then is, uh, in order to get the ad to go away, the user has to click on the little close button in the top screen here. So every time we click show interstitial, we get the test interstitial app, like this. So one final thing then that we can add in is a rewarded video app. Now, these are the most requested type of ads because they're also the most lucrative, I think, and the most profitable. So to test that out, we can get a rewarded video uh, ID like this. We can copy it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in a second interstitial um, and another button as well, just so we can test out all the different types of ads. So here, as an, we use an, ad, an interstitial ad, excuse me, and we paste in our interstitial ID that we've got from uh, AdMob. Uh, then what we're going to do is drag and drop in a button, and this is going to be our test interstitial, our test rewarded, excuse me, test rewarded video like that. Um, now what we're going to do then is in our blocks, the blocks as you can guess are probably pretty straightforward, we're going to handle the button 3 event and we're going to show interstitial 2 which is actually our, our rewarded video. So if we wanted to we could rename that uh, as well. Now I don't know if you'll be able to hear this so well but let's test it out anyway. So over in my live test what I'll try and do is um, hold the phone up to my microphone here and see if you can uh, hear the rewarded video. So when we click on the button. Hi, this is a rewarded video test ad. Nice job getting it loaded and displayed. In a couple seconds, the video will end and your app will get a reward call back. In three, two, one. Cool, okay, so that's it. That is the rewarded video app. It obviously is just a little demo if you were to click install, it'll install uh, flood it, I guess. This is the, the ad that they're um, displaying for us. If we go back here, then the ad has disappeared. This applies for any of the other ads as well. So if we show our banner, if we click on that, because we're in test mode, there's uh, no risk of um, getting our account suspended. And it just shows the developer pages, Google developer pages like this. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, hope you found it interesting, learning a little bit about the different types of AdMob units. In the next couple of videos, we'll look at how to set up our own account, how to generate our own ad IDs, but this is just giving you an idea of how the components themselves work and how you can use the um, different modules, let's say the banner and the interstitial and the rewarded video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click on the like button. If you would like to see more videos, more tutorials, please click on the subscribe button. And if you have any questions about using AdMob in your applications, just leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep on thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.